Hello and welcome to the next video in my series on how to build a website from scratch and we're looking at my complete process in this one from A to Z. In the last video, if you didn't watch that one, you should go and watch it. You can click the little card that should be popping up right now and in that video, we are looking at, or not looking at, where we did look at how to set everything up. So I set up GitHub. Uh, I set up a few other things. I made my file structure. I put everything together. I already had the design. Since the last video, the only thing I've done is I've added this image folder and just threw all of my assets. Hello. Why is this not responding? Ah, there they are. All of my assets in there. So I've also gone and uh, updated my GitHub already for this project. Uh, so if you come and look, you will see the images. They are in there. So again, if you do want to follow along with this, everything I've done so far is present in here. The link is in the description below. Uh, and if you want to work along on the project with me, you can fork it and make changes to it and put in some pull requests by all means. And as I mentioned in the last one, if you don't know what a pull request is, don't feel bad at all. But I would encourage you to start familiarizing yourself with GitHub a little bit. And if it's something you would like to see me cover, just let me know in the comments below and maybe we could do a, a video with a quick introduction to GitHub at one point once this whole series is done. So without out of the way, let's actually start some coding and stuff here. So I made my index file in the last video, but there's nothing at all in here. One thing I did mention in the last video is that it's really a good idea to set up a template to use. So my file structure, it's always pretty much the same thing that I'm using. So I like using that as a sort of a template folder. And I normally also have a template here in my HTML, but let's write it out from scratch uh, for this, since I said we're going to be doing everything from scratch. So my doc type HTML. So then we need my HTML and close HTML. Inside there, we have a couple of things we need. We have my head. We'll close off my head and we need my body, body, close body. There we go. So there's the basic, basic structure uh, up in my head. There's a few things we're going to want to add. I'm going to put in my meta car set of UTF eight. Oh no. What, what happened? UTF eight. And I'm also, this will be a responsive website. So if you haven't done a lot of responsive stuff, you will need this one. So the name of it is viewport and the content is equal to width is equal to device, device, width, comma, initial scale is equal to one. And I made a mistake somewhere in here. Whoops content is equal to width is equal to there we go so content width is equal to device width initial scale one and what that's going to do is it's going to let this be properly responsive and everything should work properly for that uh, the next thing i'm going to do here now is come and do a title we'll call it happy happy -lish. I made a spelling mistake. Happy, delicious. Close title. And I'm going to link to my CSS. Link href is equal to CSS slash main dot CSS. Rel is equal to style sheet. And of course, if you have any other meta tags you want to put in there, you can. Um, but for I'm sticking with the very basics in this one, and that's I think all I'm going to need. Uh, and that should be it for the head. So let's hit save. And I think I forgot to do one thing. Let's open up GitHub here for a second. And again, if you didn't watch the other video, I am using the GitHub software. Uh, so there is one change to my index. I'm, I'm going to create a branch for this. So I'm going to do a branch and let's call it markup. And create new branch. Super. Um, so if you're not familiar with GitHub, it's making it. So right now I'm not actually overwriting my original stuff that was up there. I'm creating a second stream of content. It will just prevent me from overwriting any of my things in case I make a mistake somewhere along the way. Uh, because I'm using Adam and Adam is linked to GitHub, this is showing me that I have made a change here uh, and that change hasn't been pushed onto my, onto GitHub yet. It's only local on my computer. Okay, so let's actually get started with uh, the creation of the, the markup, putting the content on our site. So I'm gonna keep the design here on the side because I like looking at this while I'm doing this. 
So the first thing we're going to need is this logo here, and I will be adding a navigation in. That's going to go in a header, and then then I have this main hero area here, which is sort of underneath, but this is going on top. Um, but so I think what we're going to do is I'm going to open up a uh, I'm using Emmet for this just because I find it a little bit easier. So my header, which we'll call main header. I like giving everything classes. And in, let's just do that. Inside my header, I am going to want to put a container. Because right now, uh, I, I want to make sure that it's held. All of this you can see is going to be held to a maximum width on my screen and centered. So I'm going to have lots of containers on my site. So let's just do a, a div class of container. And I'm also going to call this, I'm gonna be building a grid system uh, in here. It's gonna be a very simple flexbox grid system. So anywhere I have columns, I'm going to need to use the grid. Now I'm just trying to think, can I make just my container be my grid or? No, I don't want my container to be a grid because down here, this is breaking outside of my container, but I still need the grid there. This doesn't, oh, I don't need a really a container there either. Oops, my background shifted a bit there. That's okay. Um, I don't really need, hmm. Yeah, but so if we look here, I'm going to have a grid inside of my container. I'm going to have my, you know, grid's just a column system. So I'm going to have a column system inside the container, a column system inside my container, and then a column system outside of my container. So in this case, we'll do dot grid. So I have a div with a, which will be a container, and it will also be my grid, which is setting up my column system. And we'll be setting all of that up in the next video. So if you're curious about all of that. Uh, and what I'm actually talking about. You'll see how that works once we get there. Now inside of my main header, I am going to have my logo. And for that, we are going to set up a div of logo. And I'm just going to throw an image in there for now. You could also do this as a background image and there's some tricks for text offset and all of that. Uh, but I'm just going to do it the really nice and simple way, which is just doing my that and then with an image inside of it. And my image is image slash logo dot SVG. And if you don't know what an SVG is, it's just a scalable vector graphic. It lets my logo stay as a vector. And my alternate text is Appalicious logo. Wow, Appalicious is really hard to spell. <laughs> okay. So I have my logo that's going to be sitting over here and my nav, which we haven't looked at yet, but my navigation will be getting put over right over there. So for my nav, nice and simple, we're going to do a nav tag and I'm going to call this main nav. I'm going to have a main nav and I'm going to have a footer nav uh, down here. I have a footer nav that will be different. Um, now the reason, I, just, I like giving everything classes. I'm not gonna have a nav tag in my footer. Normally your nav tag is associated only with your main navigation. So if you have secondary navigations or other navigations, you generally don't, um, you shouldn't be putting them in nav tags. This is usually reserved or it is reserved for your main primary navigation. But I'm still going to give it a class just because I like giving everything classes. I find it a little bit easier to work when they all have the same specificity whereas a tag and a class have different uh, specificity. Okay, so in there I will have my UL and inside my UL I will have five list items and inside each list item there will be a link. So that will pump that out. And I'm actually going to class is equal to nav. And you'll see why I did that. Uh, yes. So my main navigation, now nav, we'll call it nav list, sorry. So I have my main navigation and then my UL is my nav list. I'm just going to use that as some basic styling to take all of my, you know, the bullet points away and the padding away and all of that away. Uh, okay, perfect. So what are we doing now? Do, 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 do. I need to put my links in here. So we're going to have a home. 
we're going to have an about. I'm not going to be building all these pages. I just want to have a navigation blog, pricing, and contact. Sort of a, a typical type of navigation that you might find. Uh, so that's it for my header. It's just going to have those two elements in there, my logo and my main navigation. And that's it for my header. We're going to come down to my hero area now. I'm going to put a comment here. I like commenting my HTML as much as possible. Hero area. I know there's some people who comment. Whoops, that's not what I want. Hero area. Some people do a lot more commenting than I do, but uh, you know, I like to keep it nice and simple, but I'm going to be starting my hero area. So I like to have a little comment just saying that. So it makes it easier for me to navigate around. So my hero area is this area right here. It has this big text, these two buttons, and this here right on the side. So we'll start with a section with a class of hero, nice and simple. So inside of this section, we're going to have a few things. Uh, I do need a container again to hold everything in place, and I am going to have two columns. Uh, so there'll be two columns there, and then now I need two columns here. So we're going to do another container grid. So this, I am going to call this one, uh, I don't need to write div, I just want this to be my hero text. Oops. Hero text, when inside of there I need an h1 class of title large. And I will need a paragraph. I'm trying to think. The reason that I'm thinking of title large is I'm going to have this big title here, and then I'm going to have this one here, and they're going to be the same. So I do like styling it a little bit. I'm not. I don't want it just to be my normal H1. I want it to have a special class to make it bigger. So yeah, I'm going to go with H1 title large and uh, paragraph hero intro no paragraph para large per, let's call it intro yeah we'll call it intro so that's sort of an intro paragraph you can make it bigger that could be reused on other pages whenever you need a paragraph that's going to be a little bit bigger than everything you can put some intro class on there to increase its size compared to what it normally would be and the title large will be my large titles we also will need to have my buttons uh, so my buttons will be a a class button and I have two different buttons so I'm gonna have a BTN 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 secondary plus an a button button primary and let's just space this out a little bit whoops this first button is learn more. This second one is get the app. And let's just go and copy and paste my text in now. Okay, and I'm gonna save that. Now, one thing that you might see that I'm doing a little bit differently is uh, here I've put in two hyphens and here I only have one hyphen. Basically, the way I like to work is if First of all, I have my hero, and then inside of there, I have my hero text div. So whenever I have things that are inside of something else and they're, that's where they're supposed to live, I always try and keep them with the same name to start with. It helps me, in when I'm reading my CSS, stay nice and organized and read it a little bit faster. If it's a div on its own, so it's just like, this is my hero text box, that's it. It's not anything else, it just gets one hyphen, because I can't put a space. The double hyphen for me is when it's a modifier. So I have my button and then I'm modifying the default class with the secondary class. So I'm adding on top of what my original button was. So uh, in this case, this hero text isn't modifying the hero at all. It's sort of its own entity inside of the hero. 
whereas my button secondary and my button primary are modifying the default styles of the button or adding on top of the default styles of the button. So I wanna give them their own class, but they get the little double hyphen just to help separate things a little bit. Uh, and there's lots of different naming conventions out there. If you don't like this, use your own, but do have a naming convention. And if you're really not sure, look up some naming conventions for CSS. There's Smacks and Ox and there's a whole bunch of stuff out there. So uh, do a, a link to some in the description below. You can check them out, but I definitely would try and find a naming convention you're comfortable with. And of course, if you end up doing this as a job, you'll probably be working in a team and you'll have to learn your team's naming convention as well. Uh, but for now, for me, this is how I am going to work. So I'm just gonna space this out a little bit to make it easier for me inside of here. So this is this part, whoops. This is this part here right now. And then we'll come in and do for the phone. So my phone on the side there is also a div class is equal to hero image. Close div. And inside there we will have our image with a class. Do I need to have a class on there? What am I doing? No. I just thought of something. This No, this is a little hero image I will keep though. Um, but I'm going to put that on my image itself. Class is equal to hero hero image. And let's just throw that in there. IMG uh, phone.png. I, when I did this, I forgot, and I might have to come back up. I forgot a few things here. Um, I've created my grid, so this will create a column system, but I want to be able to control these columns properly. Then I have to make my columns. I just have some divs in here. So my hero text will be a column, and this will also be a column. And I'm just calling them column for now. Uh, because I'm using Flexbox, it will be a pretty versatile column system. Um, it, I find Flexbox for making columns is super, super handy. Uh, it makes my life a lot easier than having to set it up with divs and calculating percentages and stuff like that. Um, as you'll see when I get there. For now, I'm going to leave these as columns. We might have to revisit this, but I'm going to have to come up here and do the same thing up here. Um, I have my logo column, and this will also be a column. Okay. So let's keep going. Your area is nice and finished. Next in here, I have this promote your app thing. So let's just call that sales points. So inside of sales points, what do we have? Well, we have sales points. So let's just uh, come up with our sales points. And that will also be a sales points. container this should be my section uh, section sales points inside of this I need to put in my container grid again and let's just put that in now this has a white background on it so i could technically make my sales points also be the container because i don't have a background on there but what if later down the road i wanted to change the color of the background there and it wasn't set up like this uh, if my sales points was also a container and i tried putting a background on it it would get limited to that size so even if the design doesn't necessarily call for it right away think about what could happen the client could come back and ask you to change it this could be your own personal website and later on down the road you're playing with your color scheme you decide to change things this makes it a lot more maintainable in the long run and trying to make things maintainable in the long run is always a good idea um so what do we need in here well we need this that's going to go across the top whoops promote your app so that will be an h1 that's just gonna be my normal h1. Uh, so let's promote your app. And underneath that, we will have three divs. Will they go inside of a div? Ha ha ha. Okay, we're gonna do this. Um, so in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a div class of sales point. So I have a big 
div that has all my sales points, and then I have my individual sales point times three. So I'm gonna have three of those. Inside each one of those, I am going to have an image plus an h2 plus a paragraph. So I'm gonna have my image, my h2, and my paragraph, and I have one, two, three of them. Great, uh, but I forgot they're also, those will be my columns. So I'll just add column on there. And you notice, uh, up, well, let's just put those all on. I've put uh, just column for column, even though I have three columns here, and even though I have two columns here. And this is part of the beauty of Flexbox. As long as your columns are equal widths, you can get away with doing stuff like this. Uh, I might have to modify it a little bit. This does, this is bigger and this one is smaller. So I might have to modify slightly there, but um, Flexbox does give us this where it can automatically just figure out your columns for you if they're all the same size. So that's a nice thing. One of the really nice things about Flexbox. Um, let's, cut, whoops, let's come in and put our actual pictures. So uh, my pictures are image slash uh, sales res responsive dot png. I should have made these SVGs, but I'm not going to change it now. Paste, paste. Uh, this second one, I believe, is sales hand. And the last one, I think I called it sales graph. And again, the sales points, so sales point, and then sales for my images. And I did this on purpose when I was creating or saving my images, um, just to keep the naming all consistent and the same. So it, for me, it makes my life a little bit easier and more organized. I'm going to save that. And for the first time, I'm going to look at this and see what it actually looks like, because I haven't been checking things at all. And I just want to make sure those images are actually working. Oh no, where's my project? Um, I am watching this, aren't I? Okay, so something weird has happened along the way. Um, take your app to the next level. Why is there a giant space on the top here? Oh, my logo. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to resize that. Okay, so there's my logo that's taking up all that space up there. And then I have uh, my navigation. My comment? <laughs> Why are my comments showing up in here? What did I do? <laughs> I'm putting it. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice one, Kevin. Very, very good. I'm putting in my CSS comments. <laughs> I feel that's embarrassing. Okay. Whoopsie doodles. So you guys must have been like, what the hell is he doing this whole time? <laughs> ah, silly, silly me. Save that. There we go. No more comments. And let's fix that. Take your app to the next app to the next level. Save. I think it's, I had a soft return probably in Photoshop. There we go. I uh, just deleted the space and everything. Anyway, you saw what I did. I deleted some stuff and brought it back and it got rid of that problem. Uh, and I'm missing one of my images. So one of the, oh no, it's there. My browser's just off the bottom. Okay, so, so far so good. Let's just bring this in so it's the right size. Cool. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Let's move on to the next point. Okay, my next one is Amazing App. This is where, for me, I end up having trouble naming sections. Uh, for here, nice and easy. It's sales points. It's descriptive of what's going on. I don't want to call this sales points, too. I don't want to call it next section. Um, but in this case, it's very specific content that's sort of there. Um, I don't want to call it amazing. Let's call it, um, promote, or is it a promotion? Promote, promote your app. Uh, what do we call this guys? What do we call this? If you come up with a better name for this, please give me a suggestion in the comments below. Cause I hate naming things that are sort of generic like this. Uh, we're going to call this section. 
And when I'm teaching in the classroom, I get lots of people who would call this like amazing app or, you know, I have this box, amazing box or amazing something because the name of the section right now is, but that text can change. So I don't want to use any of the text in here to really lead me to what I'm going to be calling it. Uh, doing great things for you, two pictures, a box in the middle, just call it a uh, promo. Promo section, I guess. Again, if you have a better name for this, uh, I'll be very, very happy if you suggest one to me. I will gladly change it, or you can even put in a pull request. Fork it off, put in a pull request, and uh, yeah, you could do that. So let's see, what do I want in here? Uh, so I'm gonna have my section of promo. So let's just call it uh, section promo. In here, what are we gonna have? We're going to have my grid that's not in a column because this is outside of the column, if it was a uh, column, container, sorry guys. If that was in a container, it would be sort of blocking everything off. Uh, my backgrounds wouldn't be able to escape. So I'm just gonna have a grid without a container in this case. And now, grid, do, 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 title, um, oops, um, I need this up here at the top. So that will be, let's call that a title box. It has a title in it. Um, I'm already using title for my large title at the top. And for this, those are my large titles. So we'll call this a title box. Uh, so title box, which will have an H1 and a paragraph inside of it. This app is amazing. My paragraph is kind of small and I can't read it. Copy, paste. Okay, and after my title box, what do we need? We need these two things right there. Uh, so for that, I'm going to have a column times two. And what's it? The first column has a normal H1, it has an H2, and it has a paragraph. A paragraph and a a dot btn dot btn primary and that says get the app hmm whoops there we go get the app doing great things for you copy paste Oh, I have two paragraphs in here. Whoops. Copy. Paste. Are they the exact? Oh, they're not exactly the same. Copy. Paste. Close paragraph. Okay. Uh, so I have my this that's going to go across the top. Then I have a column which will be on the side here. My column has my H1, my H2. Uh, I did mention that this is a rough. I want this text and this text to be the same. This one will become white, but otherwise they should be exactly the same. I noticed my letter spacing is a little bit different. I'm not going to be playing with letter. I'm going to be setting it up so it's all consistent. So there's my H2 and then my regular paragraphs. And then my button that we already have decided on. So that's it. In my second column, we are going to have, what are we gonna have in the second column? There's just the picture. And this, I have a feeling I'm going to be changing how I'm setting this up. I don't like having call it like a, an empty div with no content in it. So I could put this in, as, I could put my picture in there instead of doing it as a background image but it would be much easier to set up if the background image, with a background image. But I don't like having empty divs with no content in it. Okay, I'm gonna do two things. This might change when we get to actually creating this part, but I'm gonna call that image box as well. And in here where it will add our image for the time being. Uh, image source is image slash phone in hand.jpg. And let's just put a hand holding a phone. Yeah, we're gonna leave it like that for now. I don't know if I'm gonna use some overflow to prevent it from coming out and just making sure that it's always set up like that. 
Oh, I might do that, or I might just set it up as a background image. We'll see when we get there. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure yet. Uh, okay, so then we have this sort of next one down here. I have a lot of these get the app buttons. Sorry about that. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so this one will be my call to action. Uh, that's sort of how I envision this being a call to action right before the footer. So we'll call this one section call to action. And inside my call to action, this one's nice and easy. I'm going to have a paragraph plus my h1 plus my a btn btn primary again. Uh, my paragraph, let's put the text in first and then come up with some class names for this after. Copy, paste. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'm just copying and pasting, so the showcase is a little screwed up. Uh, and this should say, get the app. Um, the paragraph here is a little bit different. It's bold, and I believe it's a little bit bigger than the rest. Um, Class should be, uh, it's not intro, we can call it um, something. I'll get to that in a second. And this one I know already, class is equal to title large. Because uh, it's the same one that we used all the way up above there. So we have our title large that will be there. And I think what I'm going to do for my title large is it's always going to be just bold. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, I didn't do this at the beginning title large I'm gonna throw a span on there take your app next level take your app to the close span uh, the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to use the span to make it light or this thin text. And then by default, it will be that nice big bold. Because um, I think that normally you'd probably get it looking like that instead. of I could use strong tag instead. But I don't really want, it's more visual here, the next level. It doesn't really need to have the true strongness to it. So I'm not going to use a strong tag. I'm just going to use a span to make the rest of it light. It makes more sense in my head. Um, my paragraph does need something here. We'll call it um, text large. I'm going to do that text large, and I'm actually going to come up to my intro. Call it text intro, just so it's staying consistent again. All my paragraph modifiers will start with text. Just paragraphs way too long to write. So text intro is intro text, uh, and text large is to make it a little bit bigger, bolder. The reason I'm not doing large text and intro text is I just like, again, having it all start with the same word. It makes my CSS look a little bit more organized in my own opinion. And the last but not least, we're finally there guys, footer. Um, now one thing with the footer is I have those social icons, but I'm actually gonna use font awesome to throw those in there. So, we're going to do it that way instead. So we have um, in my footer. So we need to have my footer with then a container. We don't need a grid in this one. Uh, we don't need a container either. I don't think everything's just center aligned. Container. OK, so in here we will have what will we have? We will have my H1. It's not really a heading, is it? Let's just throw a paragraph there. Uh, paragraph. So we just have a uh, take your app to the next level. And we will have my another paragraph. No, it will be a UL. I shouldn't have called. Uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'm going to do a UL of um, social links. And then li times four uh, with an a. Cool. And we will have another ul. 
ul of nav and nav footer. And that will have li times five. Actually, let's just be lazy here and copy the original one. Copy. Oh, nav, did I call it nav list? It should be nav list. I'm going to change nav list to on styled list because I can use that for my social links too. Uh, on styled list. Copy, paste. And bring that up. And on styled list. Yes, that is good. That will work. So the everything that's on a list, if I don't want it to have the default list style, I can do on styled list. Now I could be using a reset and getting rid of that completely. I'm going to be using normalize instead. I prefer normalize. I, the whole complete reset sometimes drives me a little bit crazy. So I'm not going to do the full reset. Um, and again, I'm thinking about long term. If we were going to build this out into a complete site, I will be putting, you know, it would have a blog on there or some other things where we might want bullet points in a regular list. So if I just scrap them from the beginning, I'd have to code them back in. Some people like doing it that way with a full reset. I don't like doing that. I prefer deconstructing it a little bit. It's really up to how you like to work. Uh, now, the only thing left to do is to bring in uh, these right here, the, my, my, my font awesome things there. Okay, so to be able to use font awesome, I need to, you know, use font awesome. I haven't actually linked to it yet. Uh, and I'm just going to be linking to that actually using their CDN. I'll do that in a second. Um, but let's go and get the font awesome. Uh, so here's their website, I need the icons. And what am I going to be using? I'm going to be using I need Facebook, Facebook, and I'll use the square for all of them. So I'm just gonna come and copy. What, where's Facebook? Facebook was my third one. We might as well keep it the same. I'm also going to need Twitter. Let's go and get Twitter. Actually, I bet you I can guess all of these based on that one. Uh, let's see if I can get it right. Paste, paste, paste. I really don't like how that looks, okay. Uh, I also put it in the wrong spot. Undo, 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 undo. Paste, 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 paste. So let's go take a look here. The first one I have is Twitter. Twitter I know is square. Instagram I think is just Instagram. Facebook is obviously the square and YouTube is definitely square, YouTube square. Let's see if that worked. I'm not really sure. Oh, I didn't link to them yet. And so I'm going to link to their, to font awesome here through their CDN. You can, there's other ways of doing this. Uh, this is through a script that I'm getting from font awesome. I had to, you know, it's for free. You can get it from them. Let's just save that and see. Do, 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 but I have two of each. Whoa, 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 what did I do? I have like 8 million icons. <laughs> oh, <laughs> La, whoops, I forgot to close my eyes. Uh, I guess I didn't copy and paste the whole thing. Close eye. Copy, paste, paste, paste. There we go, that makes a lot more sense. Make sure you close your tags, guys. <laughs> I had a few things here, my, I had my CSS comments going that weren't working and now I'm not closing all my tags off. Not good practice, but we can see they're working now. So again, all I did was link to Font Awesome's CDN. Uh, if you do want to get to their CDN, Font Awesome. Um, bah, bah, bah. how do we do it? It's been a while since I've wanted to do it. Let's just go up, uh, start. Send me the embed code and this is what they'll send you. It's your own unique one that you'll be getting. You can also download it and link to it in other ways. So it's not like it's the only way you can do it. Um, but I don't know, for me, I don't really feel like managing and hosting it myself. I might as well let them do it. 
so uh, that's what that, that's it. Guys. Oh, uh, that's it. We're done. Ha! Huh. We got through all of it. Uh, almost. So all of that is done. I think I have everything I need. I'm definitely going to be coming back into my HTML at times to make little changes to my classes and stuff. I never get it bang on. Um, I think for my columns, everything is well set up, but it's possible that I have to make some tweaks to it and all of that and my names and maybe I need to add something or I forgot something. I might be changing something for this image at one point. Whoops. Um, so just as a bit of a word of warning, but you know, we'll be getting there. So let's just save that and let's open GitHub backup. And what I want to do now is I want to publish. So uh, just to show you, if you're not used to GitHub, so here I have my GitHub on there. I have my index, but uh, if I come and I look at my index, it was created nine days ago and there's nothing actually in here. Let's go back to the code. Uh, we can see everything going on. There's the one branch. It's my master branch. There's not very much. Let's just come in and say, whoa, where's my GitHub? So what I want to do now is I'm going to hit publish and that's going to sync it with the website. So it's going to bring all of these on to their website. Okay. So uh, what I want to do is you can see here, I have one change that's been done. And right here, you can see the branch. So this is where we currently are. That's the last change that I made. I'd updated the git ignore to put in the prepros. Um, and then I have this branch. So you can see this is where I've branched off. This is where I currently am now. And I'm gonna come in here and write in um, all the markup. And I'm gonna commit it. So all the markup. Is, uh, let's just put all the HTML. All the HTML is all the HTML and commit to mark. So what you can see there, it's gone and done that change. So if I come in here and refresh now, we have two branches. And if I click on the two branches, we have my markup branch, which is active. And we have my default branch. If I look at my master branch, it's been nine days since the index has been updated. Sync. I just want to make sure that I'm synced online and locally. This was, I've made my local changes. Now I want to sync it with the website. That's sort of what I forgot to do there. Okay, so now I can see that uh, markup has been updated less than a minute ago and I can compare them if I want to. So I'm going to click on this, I'm going to compare. And you can see that uh, one file has been changed. There's been 144 additions and zero deletions. Uh, so you can scroll down and see all the changes we made now. It's all of my HTML. So obviously there's a lot that's been done in there, but uh, if there's been changes that are made, it shows you the pluses and minuses for all the different things. It color codes it to see what the differences are. So what I can do now is I, I'm happy with this. Um, it's good. I know it's working. Uh, I'm going to create my pull request. So I'm going to pull this into the project now. Uh, so this branch has no conflicts, which is good, which makes sense because I haven't, uh, a conflict can happen is if changes have happened to the master branch and changes have happened to mine and they're different changes. So, uh, I don't know, someone, someone else in my team goes and does some other stuff. It isn't the same as me. We're both trying to merge in. Uh, there could be some conflicts between it because the code is different. Um, so in this case, there are no conflicts because I'm in charge of this, I can pull merge my pull request. And when I do this, it's going to, let's just do it. Confirm the merge. I'm going to delete that branch. I'm finished with my markup branch. Everything is done in there. So we can delete that branch. And now if I come here, five minutes ago, index.html was edited. This is now the live version that is up and running. We're back down to one branch. And if I go over to my commits, you'll see a few tests. I was having trouble with uh, the git ignore at one point. Um, but uh, anyway, all of the HTML was done and then was merged. So that's it for this video guys everything is done it's all up there if you want to go and take a look at it if you want to clone this onto your computer so you can work along see the code it is there the link again is in the description below uh, hopefully you liked the video so far if you did please hit the like button if you haven't already subscribed and you want to keep following this series make sure you subscribe there's a new video every single wednesday 
and any questions any comments anything like that please leave them down below i'm always happy to see people commenting and answer your questions and all of that so please don't be shy and until next time guys take it easy